we acknowledge the, the big asymmetry in power of, of, uh, of individuals and organizations, and we work to make it a, a bit more balanced. There's value to be extracted or value to be gained when um, we build on top of each other and we make the data flow from one entity to another. Um, and it's the question of how do we do that then on, uh, on a basis that's fair. This is a platform where to come together and discuss, debate, understand what this interoperability even means. Hello everyone, I am Sergio Maldonado and this is Masters of Privacy, a set of interviews covering the intersection of marketing, data, privacy and technology with a clear goal in mind which is redefining the relationship between people, brands and publishers around transparency and control. Which is to say, we're aiming for real customer centricity or if you will, human centricity. It may take us 5 years, 10 years or more, but we're patient. We're enjoying the ride, pushing our ideas farther with every single one of our guests. Speaking of which, let's get on with the show. Okay, we have Sile Sepp with us today. Sile serves as the program's lead for My Data Global. We've mentioned My Data before in the um, in our interview with Gam Diaz. What's My Data? My Data Global, of which I am a member, is an international non-profit aiming to empower people by improving their right to self-determination regarding their personal data. With a background in sociology and urban governance, Sile is especially keen in exploring the My Data concept in the urban context. That's urban, U-R-B-A-N, just in case my accent gets us confused. Also, she is interested in the implications of digital technologies and the data economy on society. Let's hear what she has to say. Sila, thanks for joining us. Thank you for the invitation. Can you tell us what is my data? My data in a, as a concept uh, is all about human-centric personal data. Um, and uh, this is the core idea that um, in today's world where there's always data gathered about us as people, us, the people, uh, should also have some uh, understanding also what is collected, who uses it, um, for what purposes, and um, have some say also how to um, what is being done with it uh, then. And yeah. th this is something that we call then in the end, uh, um, the, the possibility to determine how those data is being used um, and to have meaningful agency for that. It's not only about controlling, like who wants to just control? It's a tedious job. <laughs> but uh, but uh, what is important is that uh, if there's something uh, that is being done with uh, data about us, then uh, we would be also involved in those de decisions and have an understanding about that. Cool. So, of course, I'm already sold because I'm already <laughs> a member, right? And I was really attracted by the idea. But how did it start? Yeah, so my data um, as a, with the word, with the concept, uh, started in, in Finland in, um, I think now already seven, eight years ago. Um, but uh, this is to say also that uh, the ideas are not... Um, didn't come solely from Finland. Uh, similar concepts... Uh, uh, started uh, emerging in, in France, in, in Brazil, in Japan, uh, all over the world. And people called them with different names. So for example, in France, it, it was called uh, um, uh, self-data self uh, in English, but in, in, in French, in other places uh, with other words. Um, so it's really about the, the idea that uh, um, understanding that there's so much data gathered about this and uh, how what do we do now um, about this. Um, and um, my data is not only a concept, it's also a community. And uh, for today, it's already also a uh, my data global organization. And um, um, how it started was uh, basically that um, try to um, certain groups of people try to understand who else is working on this. How should we um, um, 
attract, uh, attract uh, and, um, and talk about this. Um, there were some discussions with the European Commission. There were some uh, uh, talks with uh, different startups and, and so forth. Um, and uh, in 2016, it was the first conference of my data um, in Helsinki. That continued to happen from year to year. We had an annual global uh, conference. Um, and uh, by uh, after some years, um, finally, there was an understanding that actually there's a huge community believing in the same vision and with, uh, to, uh, towards the same mission. Uh, and uh, to be stronger, uh, it makes sense also to establish an association. And that uh, became the My Data Global Organization. Um, and now we're already um, almost uh, three years old. Uh, still a very young uh, organization, but uh, big in, uh, in the energy behind it, in the people behind it. And of course, the community is still around it. Uh, um, so um, we really want to make sure that this is a global discussion. This is a very shared and balanced discussion between individuals and organizations. Um, because yeah, it's, it's worth to also mention that um, my Data Global, of course, advocates for um, individual privacy, individual um, agency, and all these kind of. Uh, um, values, if you may. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, there's always a, a, a dip, um, the other side that, that this there are organizations, organizations uh, also bring value to that uh, um, relationship. Um, it's just the point that um, we acknowledge the, the big asymmetry in power of, of, uh, of individuals and organizations, and we work to make it a, a bit more balanced. Thank you. I really like that. And something that I that I really appreciated when I was there uh, in 2019, I think it was at the uh, at the Helsinki conference, the global mm -hmm. conference, is that you've got people coming from different corners, as you're saying. So you've got, if I remember well, on, on our like patches, we had a like, technical approach or legal approach or business approach, if, if, mm -hmm. if I remember well. Mm -hmm. And I really like that because that's what's happening. I've seen people from the legal community approaching it, thinking, oh, how do we align the interests that sort of uh, gave birth to the GDPR, mm -hmm. the principles that gave birth to the privacy sort of framework or regulatory framework? And how do we align that with real personal agency so that people really, really understand and, you know, and, mm -hmm. and the very privacy by design principles as well? Are, are also there. So there's data ethics and not just law and, and compliance, which is mm -hmm. very boring. And also mm -hmm. it doesn't ensure that there's going to be control or agency. Mm -hmm. And and then there's all these people came from the technical side, eager to put, to sort of ride the self-sovereign identity um, horse somewhere useful as well. And uh, many of, of them are already doing so. And then of course, the business. And I've always been very attracted by the business. Here comes my question finally, because <laughs> I thought if businesses don't see value, then, you know, they will comply. Of course, they will comply. Compliance is just, you know, part of running a business, but it doesn't mean we're going to have data ethics or better data ethics and better agency and control, mm -hmm. transparency. And, but then I saw this initiative and which is the idea of the my data operators. Mm -hmm. How would you describe? So that was a long way around to ask you about my data operators. Where mm -hmm. are they? Where are they, please, Sile? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so my data operator is um, is one part of the my data model. Um, so when we're talking about the individual uh, or human centric um, um, personal data, there is the individual, of course, in that model. Um, we also see the roles uh, for different organizations to be a data source, uh, to be a data using service. But we also see a role for that. Um, um, what? Fourth part uh, for being the MyData operator, and that uh, is a role uh, to um, to carry out these kind of activities for sharing data from uh, one um, or um, let's say fostering the sharing uh, from one entity to another. And of course, here in the uh, in the MyData declaration, we also clarify that uh, roles are not actors. Uh, actors can play several roles, so you so you can also be the um, the, the data using service, for example, um, service of uh, of your own. Um, but um, the MyData operator is really the the um, 
the capability and with the infrastructure to actually meaningfully then share one uh, data from one source to, to another. And uh, there has been really, really great work in the uh, recent years on the my data operators. Um, uh, I believe it was uh, yeah, yeah uh, last year um, that the white paper on the MyData operators was uh, was released, and there uh, the the group that studied um, nine different functionalities for the MyData operator, and it went from logging and accountability, from um, data storage uh, to data sharing or exchange uh, to identity management and and so forth, um, and all those elements was really really important to understand um, because the the scope or the variety of different kind of operators is still very, very large. And I think it should be, and we yes. think it should be because uh, there's uh, the market is, uh, is very, still very young. There are different kinds of uh, organizations, different kinds of service providers. And what is important is that how do we work together? Because uh, in the end, um, uh, there's value to be extracted or value to be gained when um, we build on top of each other and we make the data flow from one entity to another um, and it's the question of how do we do that then on uh, on a basis that's fair um, that is also uh, um, op opening up the ecosystem for many players so that it doesn't undermine um, uh, for example very small organizations uh, so it creates this kind of level playing field for for all of those organizations it's very promising. I do think that um, that is the opportunity because in the end, all of the the promise in, in the GDPR and the framework and the promise sitting behind all of these changes is always in that in that corner, right? Portability. Portability doesn't carry interoperability because it'd be very hard. But then there's other frameworks like uh, PSD2 in banking in, in Europe where mm -hmm. you do have interoperability and it's mm -hmm. also a way to marry everything and deliver on the promise of open data that we've been sort of dragging for a long time, on which we've been dragging our feet for a long time. That'd be mm -hmm. amazing. And what would you say is, if you had to pick um, sort of domain-specific work that you're doing, just because you think it really uh, should, I mean, people should be paying attention to my data because of that specific work. Mm -hmm. There are a couple of uh, fields. Um, of course, um, there's more energy where there's more um, risk or more value to be gained. Let's take health, let's take uh, uh, cities or mobility. Uh, let's take, uh, for example, also skills uh, with education. Um, and uh, particularly, if, um, I um, would uh, bring up cities and it's because there is really, really great work doing uh, being done in the, um, in the field of interoperability and also trying to put the MyData principles into practice with uh, the MyData um, uh, operator model or the infrastructure as well. Um, I could bring up um, examples from, from the city of Helsinki in Finland, for example. Um, but uh, why cities are also very interesting is that, uh, um, first of all, cities as entities, as public administrations, they have a very important role to play in uh, ensuring that the rights of uh, this, their citizens are protected, that the services that they handle or are, are responsible to carry out are in the best interest of their citizens. So, but they do it together with the private um, um, private sector stakeholders, and uh, the um, uh, the issues around uh, um, private public partnerships um, are of course well known. Um, but uh, but there is a question of like how do, how do we do um, uh, agree on the governance side? How do we do it responsibly? How do we do it? Uh, um, even ethically, and how do we stay accountable to uh, towards it? So. It, cities as, uh, um, as those areas are, are very um, interesting and important. Um, and uh, on the other side, they also have a, a lot of data to, to share. They, they, are, uh, they hold a lot of data and they share, uh, can share also a lot of data for other players to, uh, again, um, enable new value. What is also important is that cities feel the need uh, to become more interoperability because as people, we um, live in one area, we might work in a, um, in a different uh, neighboring city or neighboring even country, um, and the need to 
uh, move between different technologies, different legislations, even different kind of governance models um, as people become uh, important. So it be, uh, it's frictionless, uh, it's useful, and it's also there's more value to be gained. So uh, we'll, we're seeing that uh, different cities across borders, as well as just neighboring countries between regions, are working together to uh, figure out what are those uh, minimum requirements actually to become interoperable. Um, and I could also say that, for example, my data is um, is collaborating with uh, the Open and Agile Smart Cities uh, Network, which have uh, has a, a project especially on those minimum uh, uh, interoperability mechanisms. So that's really interesting. Um, but yeah, on the other side, uh, for example, in the skills data um, uh, space, um, there, the EU data strategy read, was published uh, uh, last year, and uh, those who have read it know also that um, uh, the, the European Commission is putting forward uh, the, the vision to build uh, data spaces and also provide a lot of funding for it. And this data space is basically a, a, a place where there's a meaningful a data sharing between different hold, uh, holders on, around this um, domain and skills data is uh, is one of them um, and there's a lot of na energy now in the community also to establish those kind of collisions to build up this kind of sk skills data um, and as, as skills data space between the employers uh, between the um, training facilitators uh, education providers certification bodies uh, and also individuals in between um, to build this uh, uh, seamless experience for that individual um, and also gain um, or um, let's say uh, open up this value again to, to each of those organizations because they understand um, what kind of skills and uh, skill sets and knowledge uh, the job seekers uh, have what kind of education they need to actually um, uh, need to have for uh, to gain that kind of job or um, uh, work um, and uh, can start design the ecosystem in that way. So all in all, in all of those different domains, um, we see it very much as an ecosystem approach. Um, instead of having different organizations in silos trying to capture value, locking that uh, data and value uh, to itself, uh, we are um, seeing that there's more value to be gained when those ecosystems are open and it's really, uh, it's bigger than the sum of its uh, own parts. Um, so uh, so that's how we uh, um, yeah, see it. Yeah, in the, in the skills uh, corner, if I understand well, the emphasis is placed on getting people up to speed with the skills that are required to be able to build that interoperability and then align this with the European Commission's uh, emphasis on building those spaces. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. And I, I would bring in also here um, the the valuable insights uh, from our design community in the in the in the my data and uh, really appreciate the, the des design thinking that um, there's always two uh, stories for um, two or, or two yeah two sides of the for the same story they're the value gained and um, and provided both to the individual as well as the organizations what is the impact what is the experience that will be gained from this new um vision let's say uh, but there, uh, but the other side of that uh, story is also all the things that need to be done to actually enable that there are those partnerships for, between the different organizations there are standards there are technical um, infrastructures to be built there's data to be harmonized there are uh, governance and agreement to be made um, so all of those things are kind of the the backside of it. Um, and those two things need to be um, seen always um, in, in relation to each other and also kind of co uh, communicated together. Um, because it seems also that sometimes uh, what uh, where we get stuck is that uh, there's um, uh, because it's innovation, because it's uh, uh, also we don't know how to or 
not that we don't know, but uh, it's new and we need to also, there's some sort of risk uh, with these things, uh, then you, those who are, are less um, willing to take risks, for example, want to see the impact first so that they would then join that ecosystem. True. And that becomes a little bit of this ch chicken and egg um, problem that how can you uh, then create that impact when you don't put uh, in, um, in your efforts. Um, so, so that's the kind of part where, where we see that there's um, also work to be done, that there's yeah. always the impact is communicated as well uh, and seeing how we can actually um, uh, open it up right away. As you say, people don't want to take risks. It's very hard. Once, once you have a running business or a running process and people build in you know, a routine on top of these processes, it's also a human limitation, then how do you get everything to change? And mm -hmm. uh, if you follow like Christensen or, or like um, innovation theories, then you would need to create entirely different creatures just to, to do this and to prove to the incumbents, to those that follow the current rules, that their new approach works better by mm -hmm. disrupting the pre-existing order. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that, mm -hmm. is, that is a tall order. But mm -hmm. you're right. I mean, showing small gains is a very good way of doing it. I was just thinking about this um, because, of course, it's it's both for the organization as well as, let's say, even cities or nation states, that there's always some sort of legacy behind it, depending on what is the level of digitalization, what is the kind of infrastructures that are built. Um, so it kind of uh, uh, gives the opportunity or um, gives some sort of opportunity how to adapt, but perhaps not so much uh, as it would be needed. So that's the question, how to go for, for, forward from there. Um, and um, really the kind of agile thinking of, uh, of trying to see small incremental steps, how you can move forward is, is really important. If you could ask for one wish, right? In this space, right? In, with my data, if you could choose for one thing to materialize of the many of the many possibilities in this space, which one would you ask for? Oh, such a hard question um, <laughs> because picking one would right away um, seem that the less uh, the others are less relevant. Uh, and uh, but let's let's take just examples yeah. uh, of what could be materializing. There's. Um, um, one of the things that uh, my, um, we, as tools we use in, in my data is also the, our slogan, make it happen and make it uh, right. So there's always the part that's what we want to make this um, happen in, and, and hence we need to build those use cases, we need to capture value, we need to uh, um, build technical infrastructures and so forth. Um, that's, I think, going rather okay as well um, and uh, at the same time there's always this uh, struggle of how to also steer it in the right direction because uh, as our um, one of our uh, great keynotes in one of the conferences said so that when you invent the ship you'll also invent the shipwreck uh, so uh, it, uh, anticipating those shipwrecks is really really important um, and um, and hence what is really really important and is materializing all the time is is this collaboration between the and the community because I also quote one uh, one of the great professors that I uh, listened to recently uh, Miren Guterres uh, said that uh, when uh, you need to collaborate because uh, one side might know the value uh, but not not know what is possible and vice versa. Um, so hence, you bring uh, together different people constantly and you show what is possible, what is valuable and what, uh, how can we move forward. So that's, I think, uh, really, really important that it needs to be content continuously developed and maintained as well, that there is such kind of collaboration and best practices to do it. Um, but of course, like you mentioned in my data, uh, we work very much on the different perspectives from business to legal to tech, the societal and coming from a European context. Uh, uh, I think the, the work that the European Commission is doing right now with um, with the different legislations, uh, especially with the Data Governance Act, is really, really um, important work. And uh, uh, we've uh, been um, 
focusing on, on uh, putting our commentary forward to the commission. Um, we have also been invited to the to the hearing, uh, so we hope cool. to have even better conversation with them in the uh, in the near future. And um, by um, having the scope for the le legislation and for those data sharing uh, services very wide, but also incentivizing with the legislation for interoper interoperability, I think we can already make quite a lot of progress in the field in the coming years. Yes, yes. I was thinking, what would it take for my data not to be necessary? You know, like in mm. a pretty drastic but positive way. Like, think, oh, every objective has been accomplished. It's great that an organization like my data with people from so many different places, not just physical places, but also, you know, different uh, areas, parts of society can give this feedback to the EU commission. I think it's super valuable mm -hmm. so that we can shape mm -hmm. regulatory framework. And uh, at the same time, something that, that I keep going back to is interoperability. The, the whole issue with competition, competition against privacy, how regulation entrenches, you know, uh, oligopolies and monopolies and how interoperability could do so much. And I mm -hmm. think my data is a perfect forum for that, for, for a design of the taxonomies or the methods or the processes that would lead to interoperability. Mm -hmm. I don't know, is there anything else, one last idea that you want to throw out there to, to get us all to think a bit farther? Yeah, I think uh, what you uh, mentioned the last was uh, was really important that like this is a platform where to come together and discuss, debate, understand what this interoperability even means. How do we go there, um, and uh, how do we materialize in the, it in the in the end? Uh, so in the my data operators work, we don't call it that. Okay, we're working only for the interoperability. We call it uh, that we are working on the journey of uh, interoperability because it will. We are on this journey, and we will we'll keep on going uh, towards it. Um, and I keep on remembering also a a quote from a um, sociologist called uh, Saskia Sassen that uh, big terms are an invitation to, uh, for laziness. Um, and uh, it was really, really interesting to me that interoperability seems like this one great <laughs> big term as well. But uh, do we really understand it well on uh, what does it actually mean? How should we, um, how should we work towards it? Um, and um, yeah, um, yeah. What, what is all at, at stake. So um, my last comment, I guess, is that uh, let's all come together and uh, and uh, sharpen our minds to to think and, and then also work towards that interoperability. Perfect, thank you. Any podcasts, books, articles, posts uh, that you would recommend? Well, of course, I, I'll invite everybody to, to read the My Data Declaration even further. Um, I'll, um, we also are releasing a new paper on the on the state of My Data in 2021, uh, capturing all the all the big conversations and the big developments in My Data in the field of My Data um, in, in this year. So I'll invite you all uh, to to read that. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think it's it's mainly just looking at the different aspects of of trying to understand where all those different communities come together and how can we complement each other because uh, um, even with all the uh, different um, sub communities working on different issues, we can learn from uh, from each other. Thank you, Sila. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much.